talk to you about another tabletop incubation system. Uh, this is not what I would consider to be a hobby level unit because they're very costly and the components are high end. So it's something you might want to look into um, after you've decided that chicken breeding is really going to be something you're going to do for many years to come. This is called the Rolex 2 and it's made by the Lions Electric Company. Let me go over the features of it. First, there's the base. This is a very solid polymer material that's going to hold up to many years of use. And unlike some incubators, this one has a water reservoir that will cover the entire bottom. But the components are basically the same as you'll find in other incubators, maybe a little better quality. So when we're putting one of these together, the first step is to put in the screen in the bottom. Just as with other incubation units, there's a piece of hardware cloth that goes into the bottom. And if you're not using an automatic egg turner, this is where your eggs will sit. And it keeps the chicks out of the water and gives them good footing. And it's also a place that you'll lay your eggs and turn them when incubating. In this case, we're using the automatic turner. Now this automatic turn is really heavy duty and they come in different sizes depending on what types of eggs you're going to incubate. This one is for the standard large chicken egg and uh, will hold 71 different eggs. The way the Rolex incubator works is there's a power unit here on the end and the automatic turner is built into that. There's an arm that extends inside the incubator base and it goes through this little clip on the end of the top part of your automatic turner. Now eggs rest on top of this blue piece that you see underneath. The metal grid slides back and forth and rolls the eggs rather than tilting them as some other units do. Now when the automatic turner is engaged it rotates the eggs once every hour and only goes in one direction taking 30 seconds to achieve a 180 degree turn. And then an hour later it retracts and goes the other way, rolling all the eggs together and turning them again another 180 degrees, again on an hourly cycle. So we'll put this inside the unit. <coughs> okay, so we have the base that holds the water, we have the hardware cloth that goes in after that, and then we have the automatic turner that sits on top of that. And as I said, turners are available from quail egg size all the way up to goose egg size. This type of turning system is really good for duck eggs, for example. A duck egg won't do well if it's put in another type of turner that simply holds it on end and tilts it back and forth. Duck eggs need to lay on their sides and roll to be properly incubated. Now another thing you'll notice, in other incubator systems you might pour the water into a reservoir directly on the bottom. This one has a better control system for water. And you see that there's a tube coming out of the base, and there's a little blue base that goes onto this water reservoir. This even has holes in it, so if this were a semi-permanent installation, you would even screw these down to a workbench, for example, or a lab countertop. Now, this is a water reservoir, and you fill it hopefully with distilled water, because you want to keep it as pure as possible. You'll also notice that there's a little ring on it. This ring controls the adjustment and height of the water level inside the incubator. So you fill this reservoir with distilled water and then just put your finger over the top of it, turn it upside down, line it up with this receiver, pull your finger away and stick it in. Now the depth of the water inside the incubator is controlled by turning this blue ring. Or you can just hold the ring and turn the water reservoir. It's up to you. This controls the humidity levels inside the incubator. Now one of the things that comes with this incubator are two, what I consider probably medical quality uh, thermometers. These are mercury thermometers and you'll notice one has a cotton sock coming off of it. This thermometer, the top one, will read the actual air temperature inside the incubator. The second thermometer here with the sock actually has a side going down into the reservoir in the bottom of the incubator and capillary action pulls the water up and you get what's called a wet bulb reading. And at the end of this video I'll show you charts that show you what the dry air compared to the wet bulb reading will mean as far as relative humidity inside your incubator. So this installs, you notice there's a bolt on it, right through a hole that's in the side here. So that goes in after 
you've installed the wire cloth and then the automatic turner on top. This is the top of the Rolex 2 incubator by Lyons. Now, you'll notice that in the center, there's the air circulation fan motor, and there's a solid state thermostat to control the temperature inside the incubator. Now, the factory setting when it comes to you through the mail will be at or about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. After you've turned it on and cycled it for a while, uh, then you'll find out if that's accurate. And if it isn't, you can adjust it. Half a turn, we'll change it. Half a turn counterclockwise, we'll change it one degree down. Half a turn clockwise, we'll change it one degree up. This is a very accurate solid state thermostat. Now, if this thermostat failed, and also one of the reasons why this is a really good unit for very critical scientific study in embryology, is if it reaches 101 degrees, there's a secondary uh, wafer thermostat here. This acts as a safety. So if something were to happen and this solid state thermostat fails, as it reaches 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the wafer here expands and opens the circuit, which means that power no longer goes to this coil that you see going around the unit that heats the eggs. So this is a backup and your eggs won't cook. The other now, there's a lucite cover and there's a lucite interior cover too that shields the chicks from the fan and from the elements that control the heat inside the incubator. There's also an electrical plug on top. That plug is to receive the automatic turner. Don't be tempted to plug anything else into that. The owner's manual says that you should use it only for the automatic turner, so I wouldn't plug a candling device in or something like that. So once you close it up, uh, there are no vent plugs to control, so the humidity is controlled specifically by the water level that you have here. Another thing I want you to think about, because this is a 200 watt unit, uh, if this is on a counter near water, and also you're dealing with water in the incubator, and you're going to be handling water when you're filling this reservoir, I recommend that you plug it into a ground fault circuit interrupt type plug. So look for that. It should already exist if you're doing this in a kitchen, for example, or a lab environment where there are work tables and there are sinks nearby. You want to make sure that you have ground fault circuit interrupt. This will prevent uh, receiving electrical shock from the system if you, for example, are wet and there's some kind of short or problem with it. So here are the two thermometers that come with the unit. One is going to read regular air temperature inside the incubator. This lower one, again, with the sock on it, is going to read wet bulb. So if you'll notice, the water feeds in right to this corner, so if any water is getting into the incubator, this little sock needs to pick it up. So this goes into the bottom. There's a hole pre-drilled in the side of the basin. Both of the thermometers just go inside. There's a washer that goes on, then a wing nut. And then of course there's another nut that goes on that holds the wing nut in place and those are ready to go. Now before you put any water in this, make sure it runs for 24 hours and the temperature is stable. Then we put water in and begin to read the relative humidity through the wet bulb thermometer. This is the wet bulb chart that I want you to consult when you're trying to determine what the humidity levels are inside the incubator. If you'll notice, there's a temperature for the dry thermometer reading and there's another temperature for the wet bulb thermometer reading then you look at where those two converge and you get your uh, final percentage of relative humidity.